been trying to do a food review yet. Yeah. It's good though. You can tell it's homemade. Yeah. The potato salad is really, really good. I'm gonna swing y'all over to Domino in a minute. Oh, that brisket is good. It is fall right apart. Uh -huh. I'm not a big fan of brisket, but since we've been here, the brisket, this is like my second time having brisket. It has been delicious. This is really good. Even though know, it's all the way cooked, it still tastes good. This is the one I've been waiting on. The barbecue sauce here is amazing. The meat is very juicy and tender. You can taste the spiciness of the barbecue sauce. You probably ain't gonna like that. And I love spices. Can you hand me a minute up? All right, starting off with the mac and cheese. It's like the best restaurant mac and cheese I've ever had. It's pretty good. I'm gonna give it an eight on the mac and cheese. The brisket just falls apart. You can't even pick up a whole piece. Pick up one side, it just falls off. Tastes really good, even though it's well done. I'm gonna give the brisket an eight and a half. The pulled pork. Mm. Well done. Well done pulled pork. The barbecue sauce is on the spicy side. Still good. I'm giving it another eight and a half. So overall, like, like you said, the bread is kind of a cornbread consistency. Not a big fan of that, but everything else is great. <laughs> Hello, family. Hey, what's up, fam? Where y'all been? What's up with y'all? What you doing? <laughs> how are you doing today? I want y'all to tell me how y'all doing in these comments. Tell me how you, how is your day going? Uh, somebody did that with the guy from Blues Clues. He has a TikTok page and he asked everybody in the comment section, you know, playing the Blues Clues music in the background. And he was just like, tell me about your day. How are you? Steve. How are you feeling? Is his name Steve? Steve yeah. See, I was older, so Blues Clues wasn't my thing. Yeah. I was a little older, too, but I still watch Blues Clues. You did? <laughs> and people were just pouring their heart out and crying and letting go. And I was like, that's a pretty good concept, you know, because a lot of people don't get that question. How are you doing today? How are you feeling? Do you need a hug? You know, just little, it's the little things that you can do for people that will just make their day, you know? Yes. It's the little things. But anyway, I do want to know how y'all doing. And Donald and I are out, um, we're, we're out in uh, San Francisco, in the San Francisco area. But we ran across this uh, barbecue place. Mm -hmm. What is it called? Tommy's Barbecue. Tommy's Barbecue. Let me just tell you. Donald does not like St. Louis I don't like St. Barbecue. Louis barbecue. He's a hater. Well, the only reason I don't like it because it's not good. That's the only reason. What? <laughs> it's just Wait, not, what? <laughs> St. Louis barbecue is just not good. Okay, I, I don't know where he got that from, but St. Louis barbecue is delicious. Don't believe but anyway, this, this reminds <laughs> me of home. Like this place, the brisket was amazing. Like, Y'all, since I've been in California, I'm finding out that I like brisket. I have never had a good brisket before. Mm -hmm. And I think I had somebody come to the house one time and make us brisket. This was when we lived in Augusta. And it was just not that good. Huh? <laughs> he, he don't want to say <laughs> no, why. No, because she's only had St. Louis brisket. That's why she... I've never had brisket oh, in St. Louis. Oh, okay. I've never... Because I don't like brisket. I just no. never did. But my brother who lives out here in California, he brought us some brisket. Yeah. It was the best brisket I had ever had. Mm. I was like, oh my God, that seasoned perfect. Like you couldn't put anything else on that brisket and you could eat it naked. Like you didn't have to put no barbecue sauce. It was just seasoned to perfection. And I was like, uh, 
that's good. And so then we run across this place. Well, I saw it on TikTok because I'm like, let's try something different because I'm, I'm tired of eating out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I can't cook here. But I was like, let's let's just try something different. So we got barbecue. Mm -hmm. I love barbecue. I love ribs. Like if if I could eat spare ribs, rib tips. Yeah, I just love ribs, riblets. I love them. So I was looking up this. I was looking up places to eat in California, where we are, and this place popped up, and I was like, I want to give that a try. And so we come here now. You're gonna pay. <laughs> You're gonna pay, pay. Yeah. But uh, it, it. I feel like it was worth the price because everything. Yeah, customer service was a ten. Oh, yeah. They're very welcoming. The restaurant was clean. The food was delicious. Like when you order it, like when I ordered these ribs, they were pulling the ribs from uh, out of the aluminum foil wrapping and cutting and slicing. I was like, oh my God, that looks so good. Yeah, that's good. And the meat was tender and it was juicy, but I mean, you know. But anyway, um, we are just out here hanging out, uh, nothing to do, because today we actually had planned to go on our train ride this morning. And as you can tell by today's title, he lied. Okay? He lied. He lied. And I'm going to tell it's it's sad and funny at the same time. So I'm going to tell you my version of it, and then Donald will insert himself because okay. he was the one that had to deal with it. Okay? So here we go. So we come here like uh, last week, and we find, because we use the Rover app to watch DJ. Well, okay, so Donald, we, we found places now. We got to remember we're in California, exactly. so we, we're not in Kansas anymore. So the prices are tripled what we are normally used to paying for Rover. Rover normally costs us between $25, $35 per night to watch DJ, mm -hmm. right? And we have been blessed where we have found people who love animals, who love dogs. They just treat DJ like a king. And I was, I told Donna, one lady let DJ sleep in her bed. Yeah. I said, he's not going to want to come home because <laughs> he's living in the lap of luxury right now. Well, uh, every time he would see Donald, he would still want to come home. So I was shocked by that because they were treating him so oh. good because we, we don't let DJ sleep in our bed. But anyway, we were looking on there and people were charging upwards of $201 per night. Yeah. And they, like in the area that we're staying in, uh, one person was like 163, 159, 135. I'm just like, we might as well buy DJ a plane. I mean, a train <laughs> ticket and take him with us because this is ridiculous. Exactly. Right. So I, I started going down the Rover app and then it started to get kind of familiar, yeah. if you will. So we found 55, 65. I say, okay, they're, they're a little further out. But it's worth it, like an uh, extra two miles or something mm -hmm. to take him. And so we find this place, and I'm st and I'm telling Donald, I'm like, make sure they're going to take care of DJ. If they have dogs, I don't want their dog to be constantly uh, jumping on DJ. And, you know, just let them know that he's from a shelter, and we have to treat him kindly because we don't know what's going to be a trigger for him, right? Mm -hmm. And now... We're going through all this, and when you look at the guy's profile, he has two little dogs that look like the chihuahuas, like chihuahuas. The, the, the Taco Bell dogs, right? Now, he told Donald, he was like, uh, I have, what did he tell you? He said he had an office separate for DJ. He got yeah. an office separate to take care of dogs when he's taking care of dogs. Yeah. And a little, little small little office area with a little doggy bed, doggy mm -hmm. bed in it. Mm-hmm. That's what he told us. That's what he told us, right? And so we're in constant communication with him because we're like five days, four days out. And so we're like, what do we need? I want to make sure he has everything he needs. He's got his bed. He's got his food. He's got his drinking. He got his blanket. He got all the things that he needs to be successful. So uh, we're supposed to check in that day between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. But Donald, because I was laying in the bed and Donald's like, Piggy, get up, it's time to go. So we leave at 6.30. We get to about 6.45, right? Yeah. We get to about 6.45. We had to go over the bridge and stuff like that. So we get there and we're knocking. And you can hear the dogs barking. And when I say you can hear the dogs barking, you can hear the dogs barking, barking. It sounds like he had 
a 150 pound dog it and uh, the way the barking was coming out this house i mean it just barking out and donald was like well this is the right house because x y and z and so they never answered the door we were early like i said we we're 15 minutes early so i was like okay we're gonna get on this train ride now i have to come back to the train sandwich later but okay so as we're getting our sandwich the guy Donald calls and the guy says well were you guys here earlier and we were like yeah he's like oh I heard the dogs barking he's like I was in the shower I'm sorry he was like normally my partner's here but he wasn't here so whatever right and so we were like okay he was like but you guys are welcome to come back now so we come back now and I say Donald you go in that house you look around you make sure that uh DJ you know gets in and he could you know where he could fit in where he could feel comfortable I, I mean i don't want dj to be bullied the entire time that we're not there right so i'm like take him in see how he get along with the dogs because dogs are going to be dogs i'm not saying that they're not going to be but i'm like sometimes people have aggressive breeds and dj is just not aggressive so anyway now i didn't go inside donald went inside so go ahead play it so well first of all i want to say this the guys seem like very very nice people mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but i walked in there first with just with dj's bed and food so i can go get a little look around and see how, how the place was and the house was clean but there was a whole lot of barking going on and i looked to the left and it's not just two it's not three it's not four it's five wow five little so i brought i brought the stuff in there and i noticed the dogs and he said well the dogs are just barking because you're here and you're new Mm -hmm. um, Understandable. I say if you when you once you bring DJ in there, I'm going to incorporate DJ in with the group, and they're gonna all get along just fine. Mm -hmm. So I walk out to DJ, and I get to the door. DJ is shaking in my hand. Something he knows something is up. And I try to put him down amongst those dogs. One dog was jumping on him. One dog seemed to be like growling at him, nipping at his ankle. Uh, he had to pick one of the dogs up because he just was not having DJ in this house with him. Mm -hmm. And it took me about, I would say, 45 seconds to make the decision that DJ is not staying here tonight. Mm -hmm. I said it as calmly as I could. I said, you know what? I just don't think this is a good fit for us. And he's like, really? I said, yeah, really. Oh, I, I, can't, I can't leave DJ here. Here's my thing. Dogs trust you to have their best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. Dogs trust you. And you got to repay that in kind. The idea, when I see videos about people leaving their dogs and not letting their dog, whatever, else, that's a whole separate story. Because I'm a dog person now, I'm a big time dog person. And so DJ trusts me to make the best decision for him. I know he's not going to want to be with anybody, but if I do have to leave him somewhere, it's going to be somewhere where he's going to feel comfortable eventually. And mm -hmm. I could not even, I couldn't see it. So, yeah. Well, yeah. we've left him with a lot of people, yeah, so that's he's, not he's been the thing. People. He's, and he's been comfortable. He's yeah. been comfortable. So, I don't think he would have been comfortable there at any point, and it would have been the longest two, three nights of his life. Yeah. So, I'm sitting in the car waiting on Donald to come out. Uh, it was... <laughs> I'm not trying to make fun of this. Wait a minute. Let me, let me be serious. Wrap it up, baby. So I, I, some say, look over, Peggy, I look over. He got the dog blanket, the food, then DJ sitting on top, and he grabbed his bag, and he running down the hill with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> we escaped. He was he was coming down the hill with the dog like this, and he looked like he was for the cry. I say, I say, Donald, what happened? What happened, Donald? Tell me. Tell me what happened. He say, DJ is not staying here. <laughs> So why so, that? so my story was a little bit calmer than I was, and Peggy's story is a little bit more more animated than I was. Find find a point in the middle, Sam. Find a point in the middle. No, I'm just I'm just saying. He grabbed his dog and his stuff and he ran. He was like, uh, DJ ain't staying here. DJ ain't staying here. That's closer. Here. That's closer. And I was like, well, I mean, of course, I y'all know I gotta make it. <laughs> <laughs> but baby, when he came out of there with the dog, the foot, because it took him a couple of trips to get all his stuff in there. 
Baby, when I tell you, he, he grabbed all that in one one pickup, and DJ was holding on to his little neck. <laughs> DJ said, get no. me out of here. He, he said to me in, 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 in Doction Ease, in Winnie Dog Talk, yeah. he said, Donald, he said, get, get me, me up out of here. here. And Donald got him up out of there, too. Now, I mean, I ain't, ain't going to lie. I knew not to laugh at the situation because <laughs> Donald is particular about DJ and everybody should be particular about their dog you can feel if it's comfortable or not you know what yeah. I'm saying and we we don't know what they would have done to DJ but what what the, here's the lie though here's the the big lie because you go on these people profiles and you see what they have mm -hmm. and he had a picture of two chihuahuas yeah. and he was like I have kept up to six dogs at one time yeah he's not telling you that your dog is number six your dog is number six he was like, we have a loving, quiet home. We have a backyard. And he had pictures of his yard and stuff like that. And um, it was just really weird that he would say, I have kept up to six dogs at a time. But he's giving you the pretense that he only has these two mild-mannered dogs. Just the two. And I told Donald, I was like, I don't, I don't know because, I mean, you get what you pay for. You really do. Yeah. And I was like, he's the lowest priced out of everybody, even though he wasn't that far from us. Mm -hmm. I'm like, there's just something weird yeah. about this, right? And so I started telling Donald, I'm like, ask him more questions. At, you know, ask him more questions. I didn't know what to ask, but I'm like, exactly. you know just to get to know him a little bit better. Like, ask him more questions. And so he never admitted to having these five other dogs in the home. We just knew it was gonna be two, it was gonna be three dogs. Yeah. It was gonna be DJ and the two little chihuahuas that he had, right? And then he said, if it gets to a point where the dogs don't get along, I have an office that I will put the new dog in and I will put a fence up and that dog will feel safe and he'll be okay. And I'll make sure their outside times are different and stuff like that. So he really made us feel like, okay, we got this. We're gonna take care of your dog. You ain't gonna have no trouble. And then when you get there, you see the office but the office is for all the dogs. All the dogs. He, they converted the office into so, a kennel, and a wide yeah. open kennel with like four dog yeah. beds. So he lied about everything, yeah. right? He just lied about everything. Uh, it was just weird that he would give us all this, you know, this talk about, oh, I only have two dogs, I only have this, I only have that. And so when Donald told him it's not going to work, he had to put in uh, he, our refund. He did it immediately. Yeah. And I think he wanted to do that to keep us from bad mouthing him, which we were not going to do because I'm not going to do that because somebody else could find him amazing. I mean, I don't know, but he was just not the fit for us. I want to say something about that. Yeah. After we left, I was like, should I leave a negative review because I didn't really use his services and stuff. Yeah. And I feel bad because this person still has a five star review. And so yeah. now somebody would come behind me and thinking it's like a, like a uh, exceptional home for their dog, and mm -hmm. it may be for some other people. But, it could be. But if any if those dogs have been trained, like if he could have said sit or oh, y'all go away and they walked away, yeah. I would have been fine with that. He had no control over the dogs. Yeah. Zero control. Zero control. They had full run of the home, and that's yeah. where the problem was. Yeah, and maybe his partner was the main person in the home and when he's there he could yeah but let the party gonna be there all the time yeah but i'm just saying because i don't know where he got the five star review from he only so, had three reviews yeah so three reviews in the time but at the time his partner could have been home yeah. when donald is holding the dog and the other dogs are jumping up trying to get at trying the to dog get him. then there's a problem so i mean that's that's what that was uh we were supposed to get on the train at nine o'clock this morning yeah but we couldn't do it because we didn't have a sitter for DJ. Most people would like a couple days notice. Sometimes people want a week notice. Yeah. And so yesterday we get home. Now it's late because 7 to 8. We didn't leave his house to about 7.45 because we're trying to see 
what we could do to make things work and it just didn't work out for us. So we get back to the house, it's about 8.15, 8, 8.20 at this yeah. time or something like that. Or eight. So Donald's on the app and he's trying to find us a replacement. Now he found some really good people. Now you got, again, you, have, you get what you pay for. Yeah. So he has to pay a little bit extra, but as long as you can go with a peace of mind exactly. that the dog is gonna be okay when you're gone, then that's a whole nother level. So anyway, um, he found somebody last night, but nobody was responding. So we woke up this morning and uh, we were like, yeah, this trip is kiboshed. Yeah. Like it, it is not gonna happen. So Donald goes over to the Amtrak station because we're gonna do this train ride. And uh, they were like, well, we could change you to tomorrow which was really good because now the tickets are $30 each cheaper. So we saved 60 bucks. I yeah. was like, hey, look at that blessing. And so we changed our tickets to tomorrow. Yes. And we found a sitter. We found three nice sitters. The guy that we really, really wanted. Rick, did you get him? Or no, you got I, it was two I really, really wanted. But my right. third choice was the great. I, I only wanted great people. So yeah. I had three great people. The one I really, really wanted, a 59-year-old man with no pets. Mm -hmm. He took care of a dog for like 15 years and the dog recently passed. Yeah. He had no other dogs other than that one, so he was not available. But there was also about a 25-year-old girl with a big backyard with no pets. The one I got was a lady with one pet. And she had perfect. She had a 12-year-old uh, pug. I ain't know yeah. the pugs live that long, but yeah. she has a 12 year old pug that doesn't really get around that much. And that's the only pet she has. Mm -hmm. And she's got a fenced in backyard. Yeah. So she's good. And that's the one we got. So I felt very, very blessed that we got her. But yeah. everybody I sent messages to were like top of the line people based on yeah. their profile, updated history, and reviews. The lady I got got 173 reviews. She's yeah. been taking care of dogs for like seven years. So that's so good. I ain't no that's one even that old. So. And see, there, here's another thing, too, about the last guy. He was just on there. He, 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 he just had, got on there. He had just got certified, what, a month ago, maybe? Yeah. So people hadn't had an opportunity to see him. But we just didn't want to badmouth him because it could have been yeah. a bad situation or whatever else. So that was that. But anyway, so we found DJ a sitter. So right now we're in talks with the hotel because I'm going to tell you, the hotel is super cheap over here in Reno. The hotel is super cheap. Mm -hmm. It's those resort fees resort that's going to get, that get you. <laughs> the resort fees are three times the, the hotel. Is it three, two, at least two times? It's like three times the hotel fees. Three times. The resort fees. So that's why the hotel fees are cheap because the resort fees going to come back and be like, oh, you thought you was getting away with something, didn't you? Mm -hmm. So we found a really nice hotel and we're going to stay there. So everything looks like it's going to work out for us. We've been watching uh, videos on uh, train rides from where we're going, you know, from where we, from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. We've been looking at videos for the train rides and stuff like that. And so I found this video for newbies and I was like, okay, let me, I'll bite, you know. And she was just telling us stuff to do. So this is where the sandwich comes into play because she was like, sometimes when their machines are down and they can't take money from you, they won't sell food at that time. So she was like, always make sure you bring yourself some snacks and stuff you can eat on, especially if you're going on a long train ride. Our train ride is about eight hours. Eight hours. So we went out yesterday and we bought snacks. So now we just have to get back to the house and pack up to get ready to go on this trip. We can't drop DJ off until tomorrow at 7.30. 7.30. Our train ride leaves at 9. But this lady is really close. Yeah, she lives about 10 minutes, 12 minutes from the train station. 12 minutes from the train station. So that's not bad at all. So we're going to drop DJ off at 7. And we're going to sit around a little bit just to see and just talk mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Now that I feel like we've gotten everything in order, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, everything is covered. Everything is covered. We're yeah. good. We so got, We got parking for the uh, train station. Yeah, the, well, it's free parking, free right? Free parking, yes. And my sister said that she's parked there many times because her and my mom, when my mom was living, they used to catch the train a lot, especially to the place that we're going. So it should be okay. We, we also watch videos, and as soon as you get from the train station, you go up the steps, then you're there. The and hotel. so our hotel is not quite a mile away. I mean, from, barely a half a mile. Barely half a mile. So I told Donald, I was like, we could do that little walk. So 
we leave at nine we should get there about five six o'clock but i don't know how many times they stop and stuff like that so i don't know but anyway we're just excited for the trip oh. donald wanted to go to the golden gate bridge yeah i might get i might get a little because we we don't i mean because there were several things that we wanted to do like we wanted to go to this winery now i'm gonna tell you what i do not like about this area going to walmart Oh okay? my God. Going to Target. Any store, every when I say everything is locked up, you can't get a comb, you can't get a brush, you better not even think about getting like your hygiene products. And uh, now I understand the makeup because you know these young ones they they will go. I've seen it happen at Walmart in St. Louis where the girls are going in there and they're getting the press on nails and they're getting the makeup and stuff like that. So I understand them locking that stuff up. But when I tell you, this this uh, Walmart is inside of uh, what used to be a mall. Mm -hmm. So it has two levels. I thought it was pretty cool because you could take the escalator up. So they got one side where you would put your grocery cart and then you get on the escalator and y'all meet up at the same time. I thought that was super cute. But anyway, if you go during the day and you're buying anything but food, you're going to be there a while yeah. because people have to run over and unlock the door. And like when I tell you they got at least six, seven rows of locked doors. And so people just press the button and stand there. So all the aisles are full of people just standing there. So you can't just run in and get you a comb. You can't run in and get cough drops. Good. Two dollar bag of cough drop locked up. You hear me? And I was like, "This is really weird," but I get it. I mean, loss prevention, theft, whatever. But I just never saw a store that locked up before. I've seen, like I say, the cosmetics and stuff like that. So they have to do what works best for them. And they had a lot of security. Yeah. And I was just like, "What is going?" I was too scared to look it up to see what had happened here or why is it like that. But. This is like the third Walmart that we've gone to and they have the same thing. So maybe it's in this area yeah. or maybe that's just what it is in California. I don't know. But I was just a little puzzled by that. Yeah. But anyway, fam, um, I think we're just going to do a little sightseeing, I guess, because it's a beautiful day. What, what's the temp outside? 67. 67. The 90 degree days are gone. They said it, it might get up to like 78 today, but it's yeah. already tw it's already 130. So I don't think. But it's it's like it's a it's a perfect fall day. Yes. It's because the sun is shining, but not like down on you where it's just so hot. Very autumnal. Okay. All right. So anyway, fam, uh, <laughs> we will see you in the next clip. All right, fam. All right. trying to pack for our train trip because it looks like all things are a go so i am trying to pack a lot of clothes into this small suitcase and i don't know how well that's going to work out so this is a pack with me as i fuss with donald to get his stuff ready to put in this bag so i'm gonna have one side of the bag and i can't add anything to it and Donald is going to have the other side of the bag. So, come on, play.
You got your stuff? Yes. So here's what it is. This is what I told Donald. I was like, the, the, the stuff that we wear will be our travel clothes, right? So we got that. So we'll get there tomorrow about, what, five or six maybe? Yeah. We'll get there about five or six tomorrow. So I feel like we could keep on what we have on because when we get there, it'll be dark. So we'll have time to put our bags down and go scouting a little bit. And then the next day, we'll need to change of clothes, you know, the morning and then the evening because Donald wants to do some hiking. I don't know how we're going to fit this into the program, but some kind of way <laughs> it's going to work. Then we need travel home clothes because we're only going to be there two days. Mm -hmm. Right? Two yes. days. The evening we get there, the whole day, the next day, and then, and then half we'll come day, back. Day, yeah. yeah. And then we're going to be moving on to our next destination. There you go. So anyway, th this is pure comedy. I don't know how we're going to do this because, you know, I like to overpack, overshop, over everything. So how many outfits you need? Three. Three. All right, family, forgive the bed, but we did it. I cheated a little bit. I put my shirt on the top. But yeah, I think we can close it now because we have our garment bag. Well, not a garment bag, but our bag for our hygiene in there. And then Donald has, how many outfits you got in there, player? Four. And I got three and a half. Okay. <laughs> so I think we did pretty good. We did. All right, family. So we got that bag together. Do you think it's going to work? Oh, We're, yeah. We got no choice but nah, for exactly. it to work. This is pretty because we just want to take the one small bag on the train. It's only two days, whatever. Yeah. We we have to make it work. <laughs> I don't, women, why do we do that to ourselves? We overpack. We overpack. We I guess we want to have options, yeah. you know, just in case something comes up. Like, what if we want to go to a fancy dinner or something? That's, I always think that I'm like, what if we want to go to a fancy dinner or what if a show becomes available and we could watch? I don't know anything about where we're going, so it's just kind of hard to pack, but I'm just going to pack like we've been packing for camping, so we'll just make it do what it does. There you go. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we got it together. We did our thing. Now, we done told this room up. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay? We done told this room up. And Donald keeps saying... Babe, I think we should downgrade to a queen size bed. And I'm like, no. You know what I told him, y'all? The devil is a liar. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Victory is mine. Yeah. yeah, I was like, the devil is a liar, cause baby, this bed don't agree with us, cause you know, we can connect, but then you go to your side and I gotta go to my side. That's it. I meet you in the middle to say good night. Then you go to your side. I go to my side. <laughs> Ain't no sides in this little bitty bed. Mm -hmm. I be wanting to roll over and then over and then over. Can't do that. But anyway, I know y'all don't believe it, but I'm going to see you in tomorrow's video, family. <laughs> 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 so until then, be safe, be blessed, and we will be back. All right, fam. Bye-bye.